if you take a look at your bulletin, men's ministry, ladies ministry this week. Okay, Tuesday is the, is the ladies. Wednesday is for the men at Starbucks and what and, um, a white model. So you guys can come through to come because it's an exciting ministry, and we do have uh, other things happening. So we're really planning the year out with the vision God has given us. It's really going to be exciting. Never get to be a part of that. So before I share the message, I want to really share something with you for, for prayer. Then we're going to really go into the message of God about traveling lighter this year. Okay, getting rid of the things that just don't matter. Getting rid of the stuff that just weighs you down. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened. And God says, give it to me and I will give you rest. Anybody need rest? Yeah, it's kind of tired yet dragging dead weight around. Okay, amen. Ooh, ooh, Horshack. Raising your hands back there, Sarah. Um, can I just make a quick announcement? No. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say we got a letter from the uh, Kekiku Sopona for the Thanksgiving outreach, and they said they wanted to thank us and that um, a lot of elderly were touched by our gift. So Amen. thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sharon, for creating that next year again, right? Okay. How about a hand for Sharon? Yay, Sharon. Yay. What's been fun is we, you know, we gave the gifts out there, we sat down and talked story. And it was really, really cool just sitting down with the kupuna because they, they long conversation. Sit down and just knowing that people care about them. It's really important just to talk story. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we can bless the message today, Father. It comes from you. It comes from a lot of, a lot of spending time with you and listening. And always asking the Lord, what do you want to say to your children? to you, oh, So Lord, I pray that this message will touch not only one life, but every life that's represented here. And for those who are traveling, and those are in Hilo or in Japan or somewhere on the mainland, Father, we ask for special anointing. Some people are working today. Father, you, your word, when we send it out, you said it will, will not come back void to us. So penetrate the hearts, Father, though they can't uh, hear the message or feel the presence of Christ today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Okay. So, here it is. So, we're entering to, this is the first message in 2020. Isn't it cool? Now, we hear this, well, we need 2020 vision, right? And all that. And this is really important because this year can be a banner year for you. It can be, or a bummer year for you. You get to choose. Every year, not only every year, every day you get to make that choice. Is it going to be a good day? Is it going to be a bad day? And uh, Scotty and I were talking about climate change, right? Everybody talking about climate change. You know what? Climate change today was rainy, was sunny, was over, and it changes every day. Every something, you know, you don't like the weather today, tomorrow will be different. But what is consistent is God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is predictable and He is powerful. That's what we really have to understand. So 2020, God says you can have a banner year or you can have a bummer year. You get to choose. Okay, God, will, God is willing and, and able and ready to help us to improve ourselves this year. You say, okay, I'm ready. Okay, what do you want me to do for you? And how can we partner together to accomplish great things for not only for yourself, for my will to be done in your life? So if you really, God says, I have given you all of the resources. Your dreams can come true. It's not going to be overnight. It has to be worked towards. Okay, why? Because God is not a genie, right? He is God. Nothing is, is withheld from heaven's resources. Nothing is withheld from heaven's resources. We got everything. How do we know? We got Jesus living inside of us, right? God is our all in all. Not some, but are all in all. Good. So before we um, venture into 2020, okay, it's just like going on a mission strip. Okay? We have a limitation. 50 pounds, right? Something like 50 pounds going to limitation to the Philippines or wherever you want to go. The first time we went, man, I tell you what, fuck that, getting kind of stuff inside, right? Can't even like, just travels with a little bag. But we go over there, it's just great now, okay? Then we went over there, I was 20 pounds overweight. Holy mac, I had to give my peanuts away, I had to give this away, okay, my jacket, well, I didn't do a jacket in the Philippines anyway, okay, that's five pounds away, da, da, da. Almost made it 
it almost made me start to give things away. Said, okay, you want this and all that. Then it came right there. I had to distinguish what was essential and what was non-essential. Okay, a lot of us have non-essentials in our lives that weighing us down. So God is going to come to you and says, okay, what is essential and what is non-essential? Then we have to start traveling lighter. Okay, getting rid of the things that really don't matter in the long run. So, unpacking things, okay, getting rid of the burdens they've been needlessly carrying around. This is what God wants you to do. Those are the things that um, we're doing that right now in, in, in our house. Okay, clothes that we're donating because... To be honest, I'm not going to use that size 32 pants again. You know what I mean? Okay. And looking some church, you know, some church of sentimental values. Oh, book already. You know what I mean? How many of you get kind of really, okay? Or you have worn underwear, you know, that kind of stuff, but comfortable. You make all these kind of things, you know? So when you take a look at that, okay, sit down and look at that, okay? How many Aloha shirts can I use at one time? One at a time, right? So. I've been blessed with nice shirts like that, so I'm over there, okay, I'm like keeping the ones okay, that I like and others, you know, it's just taking up space, so what we're donating to people, okay, to the Philippines over there, people, okay, some people in the Philippines could be using nice shirts like these shirts, right, but you can't use it anyway, right, so why not give it away, and that's really important in our lives, so God, what is the, are the things that make, makes you really tired? That wears you out, that discourages you, that causes you to be a little tired to the point where you want to give up. That's the kind of stuff God says. Hey, come to me, all who are okay, heavy burden and weary, and give it to me. Okay, cast your burdens upon me. Why? I'll take it away from you so that you can travel lighter. Maybe it's a good place to be that you're starting to make decisions in your life. God tells us to lighten our load. Okay. So he can handle, not, nobody else can handle. Don't give it to somebody else to handle. Not your husband, not your wife, not anybody else. Why? Because you want to weigh them down with additional burdens and Lord. Amen? So, again, travel lighter. Whatever that you're doing, you make a decision. Decision. Remember last week we, we talked about God says, examine yourself. Only you know what, what, what you're carrying around. Okay? So the Apostle Paul recognized the importance of putting things in the past. Okay, well in the past, and don't go, don't go back there. In Philippians three thirteen it says, "I focus on one thing." Okay, focus on one thing, and that's really really important. What is the focus on one thing in your life? This is what Paul says: forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Isn't that exciting? Just a little one line scripture powerful if you really understand that why we cannot live in our past glories or our failures when it's gone it's gone just like this you won't see that for the rest of eternity it's gone right so i have to look forward to it we cannot control our past mistakes or live in our past victories sometimes you talk to people about you know Especially when you go and talk to some of the friends. Go, oh, remember when we did this, remember when we did that, that. It's good to remember this, but don't go back there to live permanently. A lot of people are living with their past trophies of football, of bowling, or whatever it is, right? Look at all this different thing. It's a good reminder of the things that you accomplished in the past, but it's in the past. It's just like the Apostle Paul was saying, you know, things in the past. I was a Pharisee, an old thing, da da da, that's rubbish compared to what God, what lies ahead. God has planned for me. We cannot control by our past mistakes or victories. Okay? So if you've blown it, how many of you have blown it? Made mistakes. Okay? Learn from it and move on. Okay? Don't beat yourself up. You can be your worst enemy. Oh, you did this. Oh, you're a failure. Da da da. Do you agree with the devil more than you agree with God? Remember? I always say, you know, who told you you were they did anyway, right? So that's important to understand that. Make changes, okay? Don't do the same mistakes over and over again. Make some changes, okay? In your behavior, your habits, your choices, and avoid going down the same street again. If God did something wonderful in your life last year, be thankful, but move on because it's from glory 
to glory. God wants you more glory in your future. And that's really important. You continue on life. Okay? Whether you live it or not, it's going to go forward. But a new year before you, okay? God says his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Every morning we're given opportunities to make a difference, not only in your life, but in the life of others. Okay? You know the word high can make a difference in somebody's life? Just go high. Okay? <clears throat> but it's how you say high, by the way. Okay? Lily and I like, like to go walking. When people pass by, okay, I look at them and go, hi. But Lily has a, a song in her heart. Hi! Because of the said that. Like me, I'm just focused, right? Hi, 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 hi. Lily, hi, how are you? Come on, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I pray for more patience since you pray for me. Okay? Paul continues, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. In other words, there's a prize waiting for each and every one of us. It's going to blow your mind. No eyes can, eyes to see, okay? No mind can imagine what God has planned for those who love Him. Man, I tell you what, it's going to be exciting. In anticipation, okay, this is not the end. This is just a this is a journey toward the end. Why? Because we're looking forward to the heavenly prize. Boy, I'm excited about that. Just to, what is the heavenly prize? I don't know, but it's going to be exciting because God of the universe, okay, is making all of his gifts awaiting us as we embark and step into eternity. Whatever you can think of, it's going to blow your mind. We cannot think big enough to, for, for the creator of the universe. Think about that. Each and every one of us. If you're a runner, remember this, if you're a runner, I used to run a marathon around as I was running, you know, when I was a little younger. And, and when you're running a race, especially on the marathon, okay, you put one foot forward. And you can start off really good, but there's a time where by, I tell you, Oh, each leg feels like a ton. I mean, yeah, and just really living uphill. Oh, no. But you will hit, they call it the wall. You ever heard about the wall? Right? Whereby you just, man, you're so laboring. And the wall is there. You can break through the wall or break up. When you break through the wall, something miraculously happens it becomes effortless you don't hurt anymore it's just you're in a zone right it's just it's some days it's like golf okay some days okay when you're putting the hole looks so small right oh man you cannot read the greens or anything else but when you're in the zone the pot, you know, the hole look about that big and you can read the green man i think you can see the breaks done and it seems effortless. That's called your sweet spot. Are you living in your sweet spot? Or in your sour spot? Okay? When you start understanding that once you break that wall, maybe physical, maybe spiritual, maybe financial, okay, whatever it is. Because sometimes, just like um, how many of you want to be debt free, right? You really want to be debt free. And you know what? You really can be debt free. Then you spend money that you don't have. You go backwards again. Back into debt. If you discipline yourself just a little bit more. Bam! What happens when you're debt free? You get, man, this is good. Don't have to worry about paying bills. Isn't it cool when you start understanding the wall? Breaking through the wall. So, it seems like. You can't do it, but God says, with me, all things are possible. Dog. You know what the, You know what struggle is? Is to make us stronger. Make us more resilient. Our, our grace, our faith, our trust grows in God. When you break that wall, why? You understand the mercy and the grace of God can take you anywhere you want to. Then he carries you. Then you can call you partner with him. He says, with me, all things are possible. So, 
we can press on and win or we can quit and go back we have to decide this year so if one of your one of your major goals this year okay is to be spiritually stronger i want to be a better christian i want to be more obedient i want to do this i want to do that okay but you have to go back into the basic fundamentals first okay you have to not you okay this is not optional you must fill yourself with God's word and conversations to them through prayer. There's no other way. The more you do that, the closer you get, okay? The stronger your faith will be, the more resilient you are, okay? And the better off you'll be, period. It's that simple, but that, and but not easy, okay? Spending time, how can you know the will of God if you don't spend time with God, okay? Just like what Keith was saying, you read open the book. In the beginning was God. Oh, man. Close the book. Why? How can I share God's word if I don't know God's word? Amen. It's not, God, it's not a God that somebody else knows. It's a God that I know. And once you understand it, once you break that spiritual wall, okay, once you break through it, you have a new level of commitment. It becomes easier to start reading. It becomes easier to start serving, to start giving of your tithes and offering because. You are convinced that nothing can separate you from the love of God. No secret, right? Have you heard that one before? Man, I've been telling you this over and over and over again. Just like our kids, we tell them over and over again. But one day they get it. Oh, hallelujah, when they get it, right? You go, wow, Dad, you're kind of smart, Dad. I mean, it is really important, but you have to teach your children when they're young the ways of the Lord, and when they get older, they will not depart from it. Even when they think you, some of them might think that, oh, there goes mom and dad again. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're nagging me. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And one day they'll get it. Keep telling them the truth. Keep loving them. Keep praying for them. One day they'll turn. How many of you have had your kids? How many of you have a hard-headed spouse? Don't have to read you. Okay? My wife looks at me, she does this. Okay? So, you need God's help. You cannot, you cannot do it alone. And little at a time. Okay? A little bit at a time. It's really, 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 really important. Okay? The Bible says it this way. Zechariah 4.10. Do not despise small beginnings. Okay? A step in any direction is progress. If you're just sitting, you know, if you just sit, you know, standing around, nothing happens. But if you're going the wrong way, some of us think, oh, you know, uh, what if this, what if that, you know, it's just like God told me one time, right? Lord, I'm arguing with him, negotiating with him. And said, he goes, no, no, step out. If you're going in the wrong direction, I'll tell you. Oh, that was a revelation. Because standing still produces nothing at all. It's a stalemate. Those who wait upon the Lord, okay? Waiting is not sitting down and waiting. It's continuing to serve, continue to do something. Okay? It's important that you start moving forward and God can, can, God can move you in any direction that he wants. If you're going in the wrong direction, God will tell you. But if you s decide to stand around and do nothing, you know what happens? Nothing happens. Don't despise small beginnings. It's just like lifting weights, right? You don't go there. If you want to go you know, bench press 25 pounds on your first day, <laughs> good luck. Okay, you start a full butt, maybe 25, then you add on another weight, then 35, then you add another weight on top, then 50, then you get more weights and you get stronger, more resilient then 125, 125 adds up, right? Then you become a beast just like Elton the way of I look at Tyler, I look at Tyler right now. He's, you know, Tyler used to struggle with, with his strength. Now he can leg press, I don't know, he can leg press a Volkswagen anything right now. Why? A little bit at a time, okay? Inch by inch, everything is a cinch. Yard by yard, everything looks high, okay? So if you want to get into the Bible, okay, start slowly. Don't go over there and, and 
they tried to read the whole Bible in one, one sitting. Okay, if you want to get confused, okay, when you take a look at that, try reading the Old Testament in one day. Ain't gonna happen. Right? Try to read Chronicles. Oh my Lord. Right? Start slowly, then build it up. This is how you build strength. A little bit at a time. Okay? So, I'm going to give you. Remember this. No matter how small it is, it's progress. Okay? So, don't beat yourself up. If you fail, okay, no big deal. Okay? All you have to do, dust yourself off and start over again. Just pick up where you left off. Okay? Don't go all the way back and, you know, then, then don't become your worst best enemy. Okay? Just take your time. Now, I'm going to give you other secrets of success. Matthew 6, 33. That's the, that's the secret, unsecret. Seek the kingdom above all else. Ah! Secret number one. And live righteously. Secret number two, if you do one and two, this is what happens. And he will give you everything that you need. Oh, a secret, right? How many of us have heard this before, but didn't break the wall of your thinking, of your heart? Okay, again, Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom of God all above all else. What does that mean? Okay, God first. Okay. Live righteously. Live according to his ways. And when you do, he will give you everything that you need. Not everything that you want. Everything that you need. How simple is that, right? Don't complicate the Bible. Okay, point number one. First things first. Major on major things. Don't major on the minor stuff. Okay, seek the kingdom of God above all else. God first. Okay? We have to realize that good, permanent, and lasting change, okay, uh, no matter how hard you work, no matter how big your heart is, no matter how good your intentions are, you cannot, you cannot do it on your own power authority or willpower you cannot do it it's impossible why okay we need god's help because with god all things are probable all things are possible okay all things will happen with his help zechariah 4 6 says it is not by force nor by strength but by my spirit says the lord of the heavenly armies can get thinking of that. If you do things with God, you will succeed. If you don't include Him, you will not succeed. Can I get plainer than that? Okay. So, which leads, okay, this is really important. Second Chronicles 7 14. We're all familiar with this, but it bears really taking a look at this really closer. If, big word, if my people will humble themselves and pray and search for me and turn from their wicked ways or repent i will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land okay let's take it more personal if you would pray and humble yourself and you would pursue god on a daily basis put god first in your life and foremost and change of your ways repent if you're doing something wrong change when you start doing that god says i know that you're serious it's not only waha anymore not only lip service if you do that he said you know what i will hear from heaven and forgive yourselves and hear that let me let me let me talk about that a little bit more okay there's an important principle here if we are serious, we got to be serious about breaking out of our present situation and moving forward. Anybody want to move forward? Okay. If you're satisfied and content where you are, this message is not for you. But if you want to go forward in your finances, in your marriage, in your business, whatever it is, okay, these, okay, this is our part. Humble. 
It means that you're willing to completely submit to God's ways, not yours. I surrender. I give up, Lord. It's all yours. I am all yours. You want God to take total control of your life. Jesus, take the wheel. Okay? You are full control. That's called, that's called lordship, by the way. Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay? Pray. Always asking for God's wisdom, His guidance, and His presence, most of all. Because once God shows up, every knee bows, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? In, in total control. Okay? And what is, in, what is important with that, it, it's important to keep a constant communication with God, to build a closer relationship with Him, and talk story with Him all of the time. That's what praying is all about. Come to me and talk story, because God is all the answers, and He is more than willing to sit down with you and give you all of the answers that you're looking for. Nothing is going to be without. Nothing. Absolutely. Because he loves you that much. Sometimes his counsel is going to hurt. Boy. But it's a good hurt. Okay. Then it's important that we do that. Search to intentionally pursue his will. Intentionally. Not casually. You've got to be serious about it if you want to change. To follow his lead. To make corrections as needed. To ensure that we're aligned with God's word. Remain in me, in John 15, and I remain in you. Ask anything that you want according to God's word, and he will give it to you. Isn't that cool when you really understand that? Okay? And number four, turn or repent to change the direction of your life. If you hit it in a direction or in a wrong way, turn around. When we're going to Couple Lane yesterday, there was an accident right by... Uh, the interchange, H1, H2. A boat or something caught up a trailer. Not close on the side. And it was bumper to the bumper traffic all the way past Kauka Boulevard, all the way past, all the way past Waipau, almost straight as you're coming in from Makakila. They were at a standstill. Okay? People knew that they would be stuck, but more, most people said, nah, nah, nah. People were changing their ways. They went around and finding different ways around. Okay? If you know that there's an accident ahead of you, okay, um, and there's a sign that says, don't go there, don't go there. If you're doing something in your life and God is saying, hey, right, don't go there, and you go there, you know what it's, that's called? Foolishness. And you waste your time, your money, your frustration, and you could be doing something else better than just being stuck in traffic. Or for, like for me, it was SOS. Stuck on stooping. Okay? Why? Insanity is doing the same things, expecting different results. Amen? And working harder at the things that don't work, don't work. So change. Turn from your wicked ways, right? So, when we do, when we obey God, when we are humble ourselves, when we pray for God's intervention, and we search him seriously and we turn from our wicked ways our part then god promises to do his part partnership okay his part here okay god will give will, okay god will listen to us and give us his full undivided attention no matter what's going on in the universe all you have to say is jesus and turn around and says what do you want to keep and he will give you the personal attention that you, that you need. Why? Because Jesus loves you. Okay? It's just like we're having grandchildren running around. We're so cute, right? Seven months, eight months, almost walking, that kind of stuff, right? So, little Jordan is Kolohe. She's three years old, you know, the, the big sister. Okay? And she's running. If you know Jordan, man, she is just rah, all over the place. Okay? And one time she was running face, I said, Jordan, Jordan. And how many of the kids, okay, don't listen? And he goes, Jordan! <clears throat> That's Papa. Why? Okay? Give you give you an example. If your child, okay, was running toward a busy intersection where car is going. Okay, and they're running and you know they're gonna they're gonna get hurt. Would you say, Jordan, Jordan, don't go over there. Please don't go over there. 
I want you to go, Janet, stop! Sometimes God is yelling at you, man. Because why? You're headed in the wrong direction. Amen? He, he wants your attention. Why? Because you're going to hurt yourself if you don't change direction. So when you take a look at this, God says, I will hear undivided attention. He will forgive. God is more than willing to give us all, forgive us of all of our sin and give us a do order. A mulligan. Okay? If we are serious and ask God, I am serious. I'm, help me to change. I cannot do it alone, Lord. Help me not to sin. Remember this. Nobody is, okay? Nobody is sinless. But God, our opportunity or our goal is to sin less. Amen? And God is willing to help us do that. Because with Him, all things are possible. When you do it, try to do it on your own. Forget it. Okay? Don't even go there. Heal us. Anybody need healing? I know I do. Right? This past year has been really, really tough. So God says, you know what? Come to me. Okay? Even though what's going on? Focus on me, now don't focus on me. And I will heal you. Broken hearted. Get some health issues. All kind of different things. But I had to sit down with him. I said, Lord, I need your help. I'm tired of being alone because I am a stubborn person that's living okay i will work through pain i will work through hurt because i have so much of this responsibility that i have to do before the lord he says you know what none don't get out of my way tough anybody have a hard time doing that we get in god's way he wants to heal our lives he wants to give us a new lease in life he wants to give us a new beginning if we dedicate or rededicate our lives to him. Just because I'm, I'm a pastor doesn't mean, mean that I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. Far from it. Far from it. Yes, my wife. My wife is the biggest, my biggest cheerleader. She's my publicist. Every time she talks about, talks about me, I said, who are you talking about? Because she sees my flaws, but she accepts me just the way I am. And you want to say, Lord, only you can change down though. And I have a wife that loves Jesus Christ more than she loves me. Amen. Okay? So this can be a breakthrough year. This is what God says. But <coughs> the big word is if. you got to decide which side of the if you're going to be. IF. Prayer and trust are important key factors to breakthrough year. Prayer should be a habit. <coughs> Excuse me. It. Now, it doesn't take any skill. You can do it anytime, any place, anywhere, for anything. The more prayer you have, the more, str more strength you'll have. A person without prayer is a person without power. Let me repeat that. A person without prayer is a person without power. Why? Because you don't ask God to, okay, to power up with you. You try to do it on your own understanding. It will not work. Okay? Don't make prayer a religious routine. I gotta pray, da 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 da. And that's called vain repetition. You know, hear people pray, da 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 da. God said, stop it. God knows exactly what you need. Just thank Him. Okay? Just thank Him. And God said, just be real with Him, and God will give you everything that you need according to the riches of the glory. So God has all the answers to everything that you're going through. Some of you are going through some stuff that you haven't asked God for his wisdom. Or you're waiting for God to agree with your opinion. Does not work. Don't waste your time. If you're going to surrender to God, says God, if God is telling you something, okay, go do it right away. Don't put it off. Why? When God gives you the answers to your prayer. He wants you to, okay, to act upon the answers he's given you. If you don't, then it's your fault. Why? I've been there so many. I, I wasted so much time trying to negotiate with God because his answers didn't align with my will. Oh, oh. Don't go that way. Please don't go that way. Okay, I'm trying to teach my my children how to do that but sometimes you know 
The only way that you learn not to burn your fingers is sometimes to touch a hot stove. You know what I mean? Oh. Okay. So, all the wisdom in the world is written in the Bible, but sometimes we are so dumb that we are hot stove. Oh, really? Be a hot one. You waste your time, right? They get hurt. So, God has all the answers. He wants daily fellowship with you. He, he loves to have. Lilia is especially good at this. Early in the morning is Java and Jesus. Coffee with Jesus and Jesus conversing and I'm asking her what God is saying and we're starting to converse. Isn't that cool when you start doing that? Okay. So just, just, just spend time with Jesus. It doesn't have to be long. Okay. A second with Jesus can change your life. Just one word from him. Almighty God looks for it here in from us. Okay. Again, Jeremiah, this is God's promise. 29. We know John 29, 11. Really, you know, future and hope and all that. It's really cool. But if you read on Jeremiah 12, 13 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You're going to be serious. When you do that, God is always there to listen to you. I'll take my attention. Number two, know what to do, then do it. And live righteously. Delayed obedience equals delayed blessings. Disobedience stops blessings. Why would God bless you if you're disobedient? Uh, true, yeah? There's no plan B as far as our Christian belief is. So breaking out of slump, slump and moving forward takes courage. <coughs> it takes true grit. It's not easy being a Christian. In other words, you have to be more serious. You have to be really serious about being serious. You gotta break that wall, okay? Keep knocking, keep pursuing, keep seeking, keep asking. <coughs> and remember this, being a Christian, takes more backbone than wishbone. Okay? You gotta, just gotta do it. Okay? You cannot be convincing unless you're convinced. Amen? And the more you convince, the stronger you will be. Okay? I always talk about three kinds of people. Basic three kinds of people in the world. One, things, people who make it happen. Who are the goal getters to see something? They just charge. Right? They want to get things up. <coughs> They're very proactive. I look around, you need my help, they're always there helping. Who do the okay? The second kind is watching people watch things happen. The bystanders they take them around, sitting on the bleachers and they they watch but hesitate to get involved. They're waiting for one of these things. One of these things. Okay? And the those are the third kind said they wonder what happened? Life passed them by already. Okay? Those have missed opportunities because we're distracted by lesser things in life. Sadly, if you look back, they regret opportunities okay, of making a difference and taking more risks. It is a cool survey. What's a barn? I read a survey several years ago. They were asking people over after they're retired. Okay? If you could do it over again, what would change in your life? Okay. Most of them said, I would take more risks. I played it too safe. Isn't it cool? What is God asking you to do? That you think your risk is having faith in God. What is it God asking you to do that you haven't done yet? If you do what he's asking you to do, something spectacular is going to happen to you this year. Something, there's going to be, not in the case, I'm going to prophesy this for some of you. God is going to bless you in ways that you could never imagine if you get closer to him this year. God is more anxious to bless you than you are willing to receive. I guarantee you that. What, what can God God says, I gave my only begotten son. What makes you think that I won't give you all things to, to bless you? Nothing is your result. 
you think about what, what do you want God to do? You want God to, okay, help you be debt free? He can if you do it his way. How about heal your broken body? Yes, he can. Okay. Relationships? Yes, he can. Okay. How about uh, hmm, missions? Yes, he can. Okay. And it's going to be really important that you understand that because God, you have surrendered everything to God. And God knows. God knows your future, by the way. He has plans for your future. Okay. Success. If you do it his way. He might not ask you to go or, or go to the barrios up in the Philippines or in the bush in, in Uganda or anything else, okay? But he's going to ask you to do something that's going to be spectacular this year. It's going to be amazing. He's going to use you as conduits to touch people's lives so that they will be saved. And you know what? He will use you to bring people to Christ this year in ways that you cannot imagine. Isn't it exciting to be part of God's plan? Yeah. So take, okay, what is really important is we have to take personal responsibility for our future. Because God, okay, God wants to bless you. I mean, I heard a really funny story, oh, a joke the other day. I think I read it somewhere else. It said there's three three guys on a construction site. One Filipino guy, okay, look at it. And one one Puerto guy, one Japanese guy. Okay. And every day, boop, lunchtime. Okay, you go to lunch. Oh, they open up their lunch. Oh, man, same thing. Open them up. Japanese guy gets spam most of me. Oh, man, spam most of me, spam most of me. Every day, spam most of me, spam most of me. Oh, I'm sick and tired of spam most of me. Da, 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 da. Philippine guy go, okay, open up. Oh, no, I don't want chicken. I don't want chicken, I don't want chicken, I don't want chicken, I don't want chicken, I don't want chicken. No. I'm sick and tired of the whole of chicken. Oh, okay. And the Portuguese guy goes, oh, sauce, the Portuguese sauce, yeah, the Portuguese sauce, Portuguese, Portuguese sauce, Portuguese sauce, every single day. So the Japanese guy goes, if I open my lunch tomorrow and I see spam spam to be, I'm going to jump off this building and commit suicide. Oh, yeah. Next day, open up his lunch. Guess what? <laughs> Over the top, he jump off the building, right? Filipino guy, I, if I have chicken uh, adobo one more time, I'm going to jump off the building. Okay, open up, oh, we've got the building. Portuguese guy goes, I get Portuguese sausage again. Ah, jinx. Jump off the building, right? Next week, having a big funeral for three of them. Everybody crying, oh, I miss them. So the, the, the wife of the, the Japanese lady says, if I only knew that he looked like Musubi every single day, I would make something different. Oh, go to the Filipino lady. If I only knew that he looked like chicken adobo every day, every day, I would make something different. But the poor little wife was just heard him. And they asked her, hey, how come you're not crying? You're not sad? He says, he packs his lunch all lunch every day. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You're taking personal responsibility. What are you packing? What is different? A lot of people start to blame other people. No, it's you. It's not your husband or your wife or your pastor or your boss or your neighbor. It's you. How do you see this? What are you packing every single day? Something that will hurt you or something that will help you? And number three, God's blessings will overwhelm you. He will give you everything that you need. Okay? Everything that you need, not what you want. Everything that you need. God is more than willing to give you everything that you need. And if you want to see, okay, I spoke about this before in Psalms 103. This is what Christians have in their buckets. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of your sins and heals you, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pits and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Like eagles. Talk about blessings, amen? And furthermore, okay, Romans 8, 31, 32 says, if God has determined to stand with us, Tell me, then who can stand against us? 
For God has proved his love by giving his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for all of us, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. Anybody needs more convincing? This is what God says in his word. That's his vow, that is promise. Okay? So what else does God have to do to prove his love for us? Nothing. He gave us everything. So how can you increase your chances of being successful? Number one, boost your faith. Increase. Power up. Plug it in. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. There it is. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If, again, you do this, you will experience the peace of God, which is far more wonderful than the, what human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. If you know God got your back, man, I tell you what, no matter what, hell or high water, God got me. Why? Don't forget to thank him for the answers. If God has blessed you yesterday, he's going to bless you today, and he's going to bless you tomorrow. Okay? Here it is. Don't fake it. Faith it. You know why? Nobody loves a phony. Okay? How many of you know that imitation crap doesn't taste like crap? <laughs> True? Yeah. You know what it's made of? Fish. Painted like crap. <laughs> Weird, yeah? Well, you take a look at that. Okay? Imitation Christians bear no fruit. They just look good. Like imitation plants. Right? Imitation plants, you look at the cakes from imitation plants. It has to be real. So, one of the critical things that you and I need to know, we have to trust God in the middle of our, of our battles. Because God says, the battle is mine. Give it to me. Whatever battle you're going to, may it be relational, financial, health-wise, okay, career, God got you covered, period. No matter how difficult it is, do not, do not disconnect yourself from your faith. That's all we have. When things begin to seem impossible and out of control, keep, keep on keeping on trusting God. Man, it is so important. How many, we had the blackout yesterday. You know, Hiko went nuts. All of IL, Waimamu, Pro City, where else? Went blackout for a couple hours, but we just, you know what? What Kyle got, if you're in an emergency, you want Kyle to be on your side. Okay, he got lamps, that down, everything was cool. We're all still connected, right? So look at that, that some people were walking in the dark. Okay. When this place was dark too, it was really, really dark, right? I was watching a good book and <laughs> went, oh man, okay? And it was really nuts. But what really happened is that, okay? Okay, you know what darkness is? What is darkness, what do you think? That's right. What is hurt? The absence of healing, right? When you simply take a look at that, okay, then the what is okay? What is faith? The absence of fear. So once you start taking a look at that, is, is that is that you know God is keep on keeping on, no matter what happens. Hebrews 11, 1 and six says faith shows the reality that what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. That's hope. Okay? That's faith. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Okay? Sincerely, not casually, sincerely seek him. Why? We are sincere about, Lord, I need help. Lord, I need healing. God, okay, I need restoration. I need rest. 
go before the Lord and go over there and because he is the answer. So you keep your faith plugged into him. Once you plug out your faith, what happens is I don't care if electricity come, comes on. If you unplug, the lights are still off, right? If you keep plugged in, okay, what happens is when the electricity comes on, lights go on also. So if you keep your faith plugged in, when the answers come, okay, if you unplug, you cannot receive the answers. You got to keep plugged into Christ. So that's really important to understand that. We have to change our mindset. You know, a problem, with, you can take a look at it as a problem or a challenge. A problem saying is that, you know, we lose hope, there's no answers. That's a problem. But a challenge is go, ah, man, you know what? There gotta be an answer to this one. Okay, there has to be a way. So the mindset is different. Why? We want to seek God's face, okay? A lot of us want God to do things for us. That's called a genie. You cannot rob the Bible and hope that God is going to answer your prayer. You got to do something. Okay? Your Bible is not a pillow. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to learn the Bible by osmosis, by the way. Okay? You got to hear it. Okay? That's important. Okay? How do you get into the Bible? Sometimes, how many of you like to read? I hate to read. I used to really hate to read. If no more pictures, I don't like to read. Right? Right? So, come on. Right? I started off with the children's Bible. Oh, get nice pictures and all that. Okay, then I started off with the Living Bible. Easy to read and I worked my way up. Okay, so once we got it, I tell you what, the Word of God now cannot exist without it. Why? In the beginning, what well, was God? Okay, and the Word of God. Nothing was made nothing in the, without, without the Word of God. So the God of the Word lives inside you. And the more you read, the more you comprehend, the stronger you will be. And the devil will run away. Go, yeah, when you understand it, because you have the antidote. So what's really important again, God is not a genie, God is God. And number three, number two, eliminate clutter. Anybody's clutter in their life that you gotta get rid of? All of us have clutter. John 15, 1 and 2 says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruits. Okay, what one word is simplify. Keep it simple. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Amen. We've got to get rid of the sound of things that really don't matter and it clutters and complicate our lives. We're spinning too many plates. We're doing too many things. And we're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired of just, oh man, I gotta do this and I gotta do that and I gotta do this. And something else, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. And we're getting tired and weary of that. What are the major things that God wants you to focus on this year? Major on major and minor on minor. Most of us are, some of us are majoring on the minor things and minoring on the major things in life. This is why we get weary, we get tired, we get complicated, we get frustrated because life is not simple anymore. Yes, the other day, man, I tell you what, people were eating all kinds of, you know what I had a craving for? Sardines and onions. A little bit of shoyu, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of, of you know, a oh, little bit of kimchi on the side. Eh? Furukake? Yeah. Eh. Eh? Simple. Okay? Then I had some Filipino prime rib. Spam. Ooh. Boneless spam. Okay? Oh no, eh? Me! Oh. And I, you know, in hot rice, you put the raw egg on top. Oh! It broke the boat. Hey, some of you water in your area. Oh, man. Some of you say, what are you eating, Pesto? Oh, my goodness. Or eating cold with the hot rice. Oh, no, wait. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm getting off track over here, right? But the simple things that you grew up with. How about fried bologna sandwich? Yes. And it is on the side, eh? Go look like here. Look, you ain't dead, man. Man, I tell you what. It is. Oh, no. Toppers drive in, eh, bro? 25 cent hamburger. Joe Puluka Club. Oh, it happened way back there. 
Life was simple, right? Going down the river, go catch crayfish. Filipino lobster, a small kind, right? <laughs> and isn't it when life was simpler? So don't complicate your lives. Look at the simple things. Celebrate often. Celebrate often. Okay, if it's Tuesday, celebrate. We're celebrating our kids, our grandkids taking the first step. Yeah! My granddaughter is making, making poo-poo for the first time in the toilet. Yay, my son, yay, good job, Johnny. Isn't that crazy? But it works. Celebrate often. Okay? Make laughter and joy. Frequent, uh, frequent visitors in your home. Okay? If you want to come to our house, there's going to be laughter all over the place. We laugh about dumb things. Especially Lily. Lily has this, she has a special laugh. Anybody know what? Yeah! We're in a theater, she laughed like really loud. Like, oh, oh, oh. But enjoy, okay? And sometimes, because God loves us, he's gonna prune us, and it hurts. He's gonna prune away some of relationships that we're holding on to, that it's toxic. Ooh, but Lord, no but. He's gonna are spending thing. Say you don't need it extra stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's gonna prune your bad habits, uh, and you find your flesh will have a fit. Why? Because you become accustomed to it, but it's killing you. So God will cut. You know why God prunes? Number one, it's dead works, or He's gonna prune you because He wants more. If you know, but Kyle is a master gardener right now. He gave me one of the cucumbers was so big that it, had a, it looked like a big J. <laughs> and he's hanging on our pants. He loves this, patio, bitter melon over there, cauliflower on this side. You come to back of our house, you'll see all kinds of vegetables growing. We have a garden of Eden in the back there. And he's there every day watering and weeding and throwing away snails and all that kind of stuff. And you know what, he's tending to his garden and he prunes it to grow more. So what is God pruning in your life? If he's pruning something, dead works, praise God. If he's pruning you to let you grow, it's going to hurt for a while. It's going to really hurt for a while. Why? Okay, why is it going to hurt? Okay, if you want to progress lifting weights, it's going to hurt. Right? The more weight you put on, it's going to hurt for a while. But after a while, man, it's you break that wall. Okay, you're pruning your, your, your avocados. Guess what happens? Man. One branch on cold, the other branches come out. The more branches come out, the more avocado fruit can come out, right? So pruning for growth, that's important. And that's called maturity, by the way, right? You've got to cut things and you've got to mature in Christ. The second reason is that he prunes the branches again to bear more fruit. Okay, he had to, that's called transformation, by the way. Okay, and transformation is ugly, it hurts. It's just like, you know, you watch a, a worm. Okay, a worm goes into a, a cocoon, right? In a cocoon, and this is where life changes inside the cocoon, right? If you cut the cocoon, what happens? The butterflies all malform and it dies. But because of the struggle inside of there, okay, it comes out something totally different, something more beautiful called a butterfly. Okay, some of you worms right now is in, in a cocoon. Yeah, you struggle. You know what? I'm, my responsibility is not to cut your cocoon. Why? If you cut it prematurely, that's how you get ugly. You will not be what God wants you to be, but if you shrug inside of your neck, okay? And you want your flesh is fighting you, right? And you do this and do that, adding more weight, getting stronger, right? Reading more scripture, da, 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 okay? And look at that, and after a while, you come up something totally different. You know what, from a butterfly, you cannot become a worm again. Isn't it cool when you understand that? So there's a transformation process you're going through right now. Praise God for it. So the bottom line is, okay, if you have faith in God, your life will change. And the third is follow up. It's a really important principle. You know, in sales, anybody sell something? Okay, I used to be, Master salesman. Yeah, I can sell about everything. Like if you have a good product, if you're really and you believe in a product, right? Whatever it is. 
Say, for example, you're selling a car. He said, you get the features and the benefits of it. You have the, all the bells and whistles. Okay? You have good financing. And you can give the best presentation ever. But if you don't ask for the sale, waste your time. True? You can say, oh, man, this car is good. Da, 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 da. And the guy wants the car, but you walk away and say, hey, what happened? Okay? You didn't close the sale. Yeah. Right? It's like solar, right? You can give it a wonderful solar stuff, but you don't ask for sale, what happens? Zero dollars. You don't be, become profitable. Okay? Another thing you said, say for example, if you're trying to sell Chevrolets, yeah. is that the Chevrolet is really, really, really good, features, benefits, price, da, 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 da. And the customer asks you, hey, what kind of Chevrolet are you driving? He says, oh, I'm not driving one. I'm driving a Ford. Ah. True? If you really believe in your product, you better use your product. If you're selling, if, if you own a McDonald's franchise, but you're eating at Burger King, something's wrong. True? If you don't believe, it's just like Christianity. <coughs> hey, if you talk about Christianity, da da da, your faith, da 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 da. da. But if you don't invite people to meet Jesus, you, know, you never close the sale. Would you like to? You know, this is like, would you like to buy buy a car? Great. Would you want to buy the solar system? Okay. Give them choices. Okay. What kind of ice cream do you want? So you're closing the sale, right? So if you talk about Jesus Christ, what happens? Said, would you like to come to church? 80% of the people that dress will come to church. But why don't we ask them? Because we don't want to be rejected. This is really crazy, right? We have the best of the best in the world. Change your future and your hope. Make your life better. And don't ask people to come. Hmm. Strange, yeah? <coughs> so, James 2.18 says, But some will say, You have faith, but I have faith. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Faith without works is dead. You can believe that Jesus Christ did all this kind of stuff, but if you don't exercise your faith, don't close the sale, nothing happens. You can profess to be a Christian, do this and all that, then they take a look at your life, you live a life of compromise, you're doing this, that God frowns upon, that this Christianity is a sham. True? So what's really important is that James 22:25 says it this way. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. And if you do what it says, and don't forget what you've heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Okay? Know what to do and do what you know. Faith and works has to be at an end. You got a lot of faith, but you're not working. We can have a lot of work, but no faith. There has to be balance. Like a canoe, like both sides. If only one side, what you do is you just quit circles. <laughs> circles in. Okay? So, we're going to close with Proverbs 4, 5, and 7 says, Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or get away from them. Do not fake wisdom, do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom. Though it costs all you, all you have, get understanding. Because you can have information, but you don't have understanding, no sense. <clears throat> it's like walking into, you know, looking at a math problem. I'm not really good at math. I, I said trigonometry, you know. I look at the problem and says, I don't know. I'm just looking at numbers. Okay, information. I don't understand, but once you understand what you're looking at, oh, I can figure it out. Okay, maybe plumbing. Well, we have backed up plumbing big time, right? Uh, very much hard to start. Okay, I had to go again. Me and YouTube are best friends, by the way. Woo, woo, right? And I, I figured it out. So I looked at it. Then I understood what they were saying because they think then I could fix things. Okay. So get wisdom, understand. It's not easy, by the way, getting wisdom and understanding because it doesn't. It's, you know, it's not cheap. It's just like education. You know, it's really expensive right now. You will get experience. Okay. Remember this: failure is part of your success plan. Okay? Success is never easy. You will make a lot of mistakes. But you have to, this, this is for Christians, you just got to trust God at his word. 
If God says it, he means it. What he means, he says. And when you do what God says, you'll get the results that he promises. As simple as that. Okay? Now, if you take a look at your notes, I want you to put this along with your Psalms 143, 8 and 10. This scripture, okay, this scripture will help you overcome your wall. Anybody want to break through this year? Want to, want to better your this year, right? Okay. This is God's promise. Here we go. My son, never forget the things I taught you. If you want a long and long and satisfying life, closely follow my instruction. Closely. Never tire of loyalty and kindness. Hold these virtues tightly. Write them deep into within your heart. If you want favor with both man, God and man, and a reputation of good judgment and common sense, then trust God completely. Do not, don't ever trust yourself. In everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Don't be conceited, sure of your own wisdom. Instead, trust and reverence the Lord and turn your back on evil. When you do that, then you will be given renewed health and vitality. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of your income. And he will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest wines. Any questions about that? Put God first do what he tells you to do. That's it. Okay? So I pray that this message will penetrate deep into your hearts. It was, okay, I really want you guys to have a banner here this year, but you have to want it for yourself. Whatever it is, God has more for you. A little bit at a time, as you start adding up all of those little things, little obediences, things will just explode for you. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you do it God's way, you will be blessed far beyond what your wildest imagination Whatever you want, God has more for you. If you do it in prayer. So just a few minutes, I want you to just sit down and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. I don't want just the messages to be a message. I want this to be a revelation, an understanding for you. That you can take it out of church and, and really apply it to your life right away. These are just simple, everyday, powerful principles that will help you be successful and have a better year this year. So just be still and let the Holy Spirit speak to you.